Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today we continue with each day having a chef from the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. This is a brand new bundle. There were two last year, but this is all new with all new courses, ebooks, and every day we're doing a little uncooking demo, if you will. And today we have back Jade Turnquist, and she's going to be making something that sounds delicious, barbecue jackfruit with coleslaw. Please welcome her to the show. You are very far away, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. I am far away. I'm in Vietnam um, at the moment, so quite far away from you anyway. I'm not far away from my side of the world, but yours definitely. <laughs> well, cool. So tell us about the, the book that you have in the bundle. Yes, my book is Dehydrated Delights and um, it's a book I'd wanted to put together for a while because I'd created all these dehydrated recipes over the years and they're just sort of sitting on my hard drive and um, it's just a lot of raw vegan comfort food because people when they think of raw veganism they think oh what am I going to eat lettuce and tomatoes or you know just rabbit food but there's so many wonderful creations that we can put together um, eating a raw vegan diet and I just wanted to put my specific creations out in into the dehydrated delights book well thank you are how many people are eating a raw vegan diet in vietnam would you guess um well there's a hundred million people living here and i don't think there'd be a huge amount but there is a raw vegan community here believe it or not there is a, and there is a vietnamese raw vegan facebook page and um, over the last couple of years, a lot of um, raw vegan Vietnamese have found me online because it's sort of like, wow, there's like a foreigner in our country eating raw vegan food. So there is actually a community of people who eat raw, high raw, so to speak. Well, you know what? You uh, don't sound like you were born in Vietnam. <laughs> I don't look like I was born in Vietnam either. No, um, I'm from Australia. Yeah, I was going to say, how the heck did you end up in Vietnam? Well, we were traveling um, through Southeast Asia and our plan was we were going to go into Vietnam for a week and then we were heading up to, I guess it's up, um, to Viet um, Mexico. But I met a lady here who does a lot of charity work and she was a Vietnamese Australian. Um, she was taken from Vietnam when she was five years old at the end of the war um, because it, it was called Operation Baby Lift and a lot of um, children who were half foreigners like from the soldiers and half Vietnamese were all pulled out of the country because the communists were coming through and they thought they were going to kill the children. So she was, take, uh, she was taken out when she was five years old and she always dreamt of coming back to Vietnam and she does amazing work. Her name's Mi Hung Lee. If anyone is interested, you can Google her name and she's done charity work all over Vietnam and her and I become great friends friends and I started volunteering in the orphanage and I fell in love with the children there and one thing led to another and it's now nearly four years I've lived here so it's a long time. <laughs> do, do you ever miss Australia? Oh of course I mean it's my country and I haven't been there for nearly two years well, over two years because of the pandemic. So, of course, I've got my daughter and my grandson and my mum in Australia. I mean, of course, you miss your family it's, and, and you miss your culture um, when you're living overseas because it's who you are. You're always going to be an Australian. It doesn't matter where you are. Do you speak Vietnamese or do a lot of Vietnamese speak English? <laughs> well, that's a funny question. Um, I teach um, English over here. Um, so I hear a lot of um, Vietnamese speaking English um, because of the situation that I'm in. But I always say everybody's learning um, English in Vietnam, but no one really speaks it. Um, as far as um, being able to speak the language, it is probably one of the hardest languages. It's like Chinese. It's a tone language. And I have had lessons and I, I know how the basics and I had to ask how much something is and the money. I learned the money. That's really important. Um, but um, 
Not really. Every time I say words, most of the time they just, they, I call it the Vietnamese, no, they shake their hands like this and they don't understand a word I say anyway. And then I'll, uh, then I'll write it down and they say, oh, and I'm like, and they'll say the word, I'm like, that's what I said, but I can't hit the tones. It's a tone language like Chinese. Wow. So when, when and why and where did you first become raw or maybe first vegan first? Well, I became vegan just over nine years ago. Um, my daughter was studying animal studies and um, she had learned about the documentary Earthlings. And we were in Japan. We were traveling um, we went on like we went to five different countries and we're traveling through and as you do while you're traveling I mean we were in Tokyo you decide to watch Earthlings I mean everyone does that and um, we watched it and just like that after watching Earthlings we became vegan um, I was always on a health journey I've always been interested in raw vegan food and it was just one of the next steps for me was starting to include a lot more raw vegan food into my lifestyle nice and you feel good doing it yeah of course of course I have um recently I've started introducing a bit more cooked food into my diet as well so I'm eating um so now I just say I'm eating a high raw um because uh it's just been a, a, a weird and wonderful year let's put it that way with the pandemic and uh, <laughs> I've been in some different situations where I've been forced basically to eat cooked food um through necessity and I've sort of enjoyed it. So, <laughs> um, so now I'm eating a, a, I would say a high raw diet with the inclusion of potatoes and things like that. Nice. Nice. Do they have, uh, do they have the same type of potatoes in Vietnam that we have all the different varieties, purple and red and sweet potatoes? Not like America. I was recently in America. Um, my God, you guys have got like a smorgasbord of every potato you can possibly get. But I think that's just everything in America anyway. You guys have everything. Um, but the sweet potatoes, yeah, you can get the purple, you can get the white, you can, you can get all sorts of sweet potatoes because sweet potatoes are a big part of the Vietnamese diet. As for normal potatoes, um, like your white potatoes, you generally only get one or two different varieties because it's not a big part of the Vietnamese diet. So you get what you get. Um, but sweet potatoes, definitely, you can get a range. That's fantastic. Those are my favourite anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still good, but uh, it was exciting. With the, uh, I couldn't believe how many potatoes you guys have in America. <laughs> I know. It's crazy how we're so lucky. Yeah, you sure, you sure are. I'm sure we've got a, a big range like that in Australia as well. But, you know, everything's bigger in America. You bet. Even the people now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it, Mexico was the same, actually. I was surprised when I was there. I was like, wow, there's a lot of big people in Mexico as well. Wow. So what are you going to make for us today? Well, I'm going to make um, raw vegan barbecue tacos and um, I'm first of all, I'm going to show you what um, jackfruit is. We're going to make it with jackfruit and I've just kept one little um, jackfruit here because People often say to me, do I use the green ones in the tin? Because that's what you would generally use if you were cooking. But if you're making raw vegan and you were using the green ones, it really wouldn't taste that nice. So this is what a fresh jackfruit looks like. Now, if you can't get fresh jackfruit in your country, I know in America they sell them frozen in whole foods because I saw them whilst I was over there. Um, but if you can't get jackfruit, this would be equally as delicious with peaches, with apricots, with plum, um, even like fresh mango. So if you, don't panic if you can't get jackfruit. You can make it with different fruits. So that's the jackfruit there. Um, now, are we going to get started making it? Yeah, please. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Just making sure. Okay, so I'm just going to get my little recipe up because there's a, quite a few components in this particular thing. So I don't remember it offhand, even though it is my recipe. Okay, so the first thing we had was we've got the jackfruit and we chopped it up. So I've pre-chopped it because we would have been here all day. Um, it took forever to chop it. So I've pre-sliced it up. Now, jackfruit's quite stringy and you can see it's quite 
sort of firmish. So it's very easy once you've got it all cut up. And then we've got some soaked dates. Now, the reason I soak them is because when you blend dates, um, if they're not soaked, they don't blend too well. And I find they're a little bit chunky. We want to get a smooth consistency because we're making a sauce for the jackfruit to actually come into. Now, the next thing we needed was dried apricots. Now, I don't know what's going on in Vietnam. I only got back here a few days ago. However, Vietnam was closed for nearly six months due to the pandemic and nearly all the foreigners have left. So they're obviously not getting in dried apricots for foreigners anymore. So we're using dried figs instead. And that's a great thing about a recipe. I want to share this. If you see something on there, you can easily change something for something else. People panic. I get messages from people all the time. I can't get this in my country, blah, blah, blah. So it's really important that you learn to be adaptable with recipes because you're not always going to get the same components as what someone else has. Hence, I couldn't get dried apricots. I went to five different shops where they sell Western products. But anyway, you make do when you're in um, developing countries, you use what you use okay so we, what we're going to do we're going to put the dates and the dried apricots in the blender then we've got some sun-dried tomatoes um, I buy the the dried ones and I soak them so that they become flexible again and they're oil free you just put them in there try not to get the oil one because ultimately we want to try and keep this oil free um, if you can only get oil ones where you are, then just take them out, put them on a paper towel so you can get all the oil out of them. Okay, then we're gonna have the meat of one mango. So I've got a mango here, very lucky in Vietnam. They have beautiful mangoes. Now, when you slice a mango, let me show you how, a great way to score it. So you can just, you can do like that. If you go like that, you've easily got your little bits and pieces together. So that's an easy way for people to score a mango. Put that into the blender. Now, I use a lot of my hands when I'm making raw vegan food. I don't know if it's optimal, but I'm generally the only person I make raw vegan food for. Um, but hands are for cooking with or making food with, I believe. I don't know if it's because I've got European blood or what, but I like <laughs> I like using my hands to make things. So we've got the mango. Then we've got the tomato, and we're going to remove the pulp of our tomato. So when I remove the pulp, I cut mine in half like this, and then I just simply scoop it out. You can use a spoon if you don't like getting your fingers dirty. You can just scoop it out like that. Or if you're like me, sometimes I just use my hands either way. But, well, so you know what they say, fingers were invented before forks. Absolutely, absolutely. I. But you know I, what, Jade, we can't see what you're doing. Is there a possible way you could tilt the camera just a tiny bit? Ah, yes. There we go. Yeah, we don't need to see my face, actually. Well, we like to that. see your face, but just not while you're prepping the food. <laughs> yeah, so we just get this out like this. See, and then you've just got the meat of the tomato. So we're just using the meat of the tomato. Now, I keep these, like if I use that, I keep these. I will make this for something else. I'll throw it in a sauce or whatever. I try and use all my food. I don't like wasting food, but... Again, it's up to you guys what you do, obviously, with your food. Then we've got a red shallot. So we're going to just put the red shallot in the blender. Um, we've got a clove of garlic, which I put uh, beforehand. We've got some ginger. Now, that's, I call that about a thumb of ginger. You can see there's my thumb. It's about the size of half my thumb. So we're going to just throw that in for some flavour. We've got some smoke. Paprika, this is how smoked paprika comes in Vietnam. You get things in little bags. We don't get all the fancy little jars and things like that that you get in foreign countries. I don't know why, but just put it oh, about a quarter of a teaspoon of smoked paprika in there. Now we're going to put some black peppercorns in there. So I put about three black peppercorns just like that. We're just going to throw that in the blender. 
and we're going to put the juice of uh, one lime in there. Now, I actually said to put a whole lime in there. In the recipe, it says put a whole lime in there, but I do have a clause in there. I say um, just do the juice only if you're not used to having the whole pulp. I put the whole lime in there, but as I said, not everyone will want to do that. And then we can just add some chilli flakes in there. And it's just to your liking. Like, if you don't like much chilli, don't put much chilli in there. If you like lots of chilli, put lots of chilli in there. It's up to you. So then we're just going to blend that all together. And then we've got a sauce once we blend it together. And it looks like this. So this sauce here, this becomes a component for our barbecue tacos. So we uh, barbecue jackfruit. So we've got the jackfruit here like this. Move this out of the way because that's for my coleslaw component. There's a lot of components here for this particular recipe. So we've got the sauce here. We're going to put that in with the jackfruit. We're going to mix it around. Now, this recipe actually requires a dehydrator because my recipe book is obviously called Dehydrated Delights. Now, if you don't have a dehydrator, don't think you can't make this. You can easily make this in an oven. And I have a confession to make. I do not have my dehydrator at the moment because um, I've only just arrived back in Vietnam and it's at my son's place here. So last night to make this, I used an oven and I used my oven at 115 degrees and I just... Um, kept the door ajar so if you don't have a dehydrator don't think you can't make this just put it in a little oven and just keep the door open and then you only need about 10 or 15 minutes um maybe 20 but if it's in a dehydrator you need about four to six hours so just letting you know and i know the majority of people that follow chef aj would um probably eat cooked food so i'm just letting you know so you can use it so then once it's cooked, this is a cooked version that I made last night. Once it's cooked, you can see it's really soft. Now, I showed you before how the jackfruit was quite chewy before. But then, see, now it just breaks apart. It's all tender. And that's what heating it up or dehydrating it um, actually does to the recipe. So then we've got like a nice barbecue jackfruit sort of component. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to make the coleslaw component because this is uh, we mix and match it. We're going to have coal. We're going to got. We're going to have the lettuce leaves. We're going to put the coleslaw on top. Then we're going to put the barbecue jackfruit on top, and it's really really yummy once you put it all together. So we're going to get our big bowl here. I use a big bowl because I make salads the size of my head. So we've got about here about a cup of. Um, red cabbage or pink cabbage or whatever cabbage color you want to call it purple i call it purple but i've been noticing more and more people call it red or pink or whatever so anyway whatever color you want to call it so that's for our coleslaw we have the lettuce here i got two cups now in the recipe which i will be sending through to chef aj today because um I sent her the copy from the recipe book, but we need to have it typed up. So that'll go through today. So you'll have the recipe. I've got two cups of lettuce. You can use any lettuce you like. I put on the recipe romaine lettuce, but, you know, use any lettuce you like. It really makes no difference. And we've got some carrot because we need to have shredded carrot when we're making coleslaw. That's essential. So as you can see, there's a lot of salad happening there. And we're going to make a dressing to go with that because we can't have coleslaw without a creamy um, dressing. So here are the components. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to put in here. So we're going to put quarter of a cup of sunflower seeds. Now I would suggest soaking your sunflower seeds. Generally, I soak my sunflower seeds for about one to two hours because when you go to blend them, they blend a lot smoother and creamier when they're being soaked. Don't, I wouldn't suggest soaking um, sunflower seeds any longer than that. They can actually go a little bit soggy. They're not like the cashew, which you could leave overnight. So we've got that. We've got some apple cider vinegar. We've got a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. 
I haven't got apple cider vinegar because I couldn't locate that in Vietnam, <laughs> but use any vinegar. But apple cider vinegar ultimately is the healthiest version, so we're going to add that into it. Um, we've got half a zucchini. Now, the reason I use zucchini is because I like to keep my food low fat, and I actually learned this years ago through Tani Raw. She... Um, always add zucchini into most of her dressings and the reason she does that she says let's stretch the fat so it's a great way to stretch your fat because we're only using a quarter of a cup of sunflower seeds once we put the zucchini in it actually makes the dressing a lot bigger and creamier and to be honest with you you don't miss having more sunflower seeds in it it really bulks it up and gives it that creamy texture uh, we're going to add another three peppercorns into it. Just, you know, little peppercorns. So we will add that into the dressing. Um, we're going to add the stem of one celery. We're going to add one red shallot. And we are going to add a quarter of a cup of water. Now, if you find it doesn't blend enough, you can always add an, um, more water. You know, it, it always varies. I would recommend when making creamy dressings to have a high-speed blender. Um, you know, your $20 Kmart blenders don't tend to make your sauce creamy. As you can see here, I've made my sauce and it's super, it's really creamy. And the reason it's so creamy is because I've got a good blender but you can see I've got the, the zucchini in here and it's just made it that much bigger. This would have been like a third, probably two thirds of the size size size. if I hadn't added in the um, zucchini. So zucchini is in a lot of my dressings. People quite often say to me, why do you have zucchini in your dressings? Well, that's why. Because I like having a lot of dressings, but I like to keep my fat low because I gain weight very easily. Okay. So we're just going to pour that into our big salad bowl. Now, if I was making a regular coleslaw and I wasn't having the sweetness of the barbecue jackfruit, I would add probably two dates or um, two dried apricots or something like that into the dressing mix so it had a sweeter taste. But because I've got the sweetness from the barbecue jackfruit, I didn't add sweetness into the coleslaw. Just let me know if you decide just to make the coleslaw. If you'd like a sweeter one, and I know things are a lot sweeter in um, America, or you could add some, uh, you know, some maple syrup or something like that. It's up to you. So here we go. So here we've got our coleslaw just like that. So what we're going to do, I've got my tray here. I'm going to just put this right down like this so you can see I've got my tray here, and we're going to be serving up the coleslaw on the little lettuce leaves. I use butter lettuce, anything really that you can get a lettuce cup. You could use cabbage. You could use whatever you like for your little tacos, really. Um, don't get so fixated on, you know, what's what. Oh, if you can't get a certain thing. If you're in America, I'm sure you can get everything. I was blown away with how much stuff you guys can get. <laughs> but... If you're in a more simplistic country, don't panic. If you can't get certain things, just chop and change it. That's what I do. I've learned to be very adaptable living in Southeast Asia. You have to be because you just cannot get things. You know, and Jade Barber wants to know what does what does uh, jackfruit look like? You know, when it's like when you buy it at the store. Um. Ah. Now it's like a big green thing. It it will be about this big. I, I'm spoiled here in Asia. I buy it on the side of the road already cut and peeled for me <laughs> for a dollar a kilo. However, if you were buying it in a shop in America, I have, I have seen it in like Asian grocers and things like that. And it will be cut up and you'll sort of see, you'll see the flesh inside it like that. And the outside would be green. It's like a green, I wonder if, you guys will be able to see this. I, I should have bought a jackfruit because they're so cheap here. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get a photo. I'm going to actually put it up for you. But isn't there a difference between the jackfruit that you buy in the can and the kind you buy in the store? Like Yes. 
Yeah, there is. Well, actually, it's exactly the same. It's just this is ripe jackfruit, and the one that you buy in the can is unripe. So show, show your phone again so they can see what it looks like when it's... That's it. Talk. That's that's it on a tree, but that's what it'll look like. It's green on the outside like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll just show you also a photo. That's what it looks like if it's open. So that would be the ripe one. But even if you saw it green, not in the car, uh, I mean, not in the uh, can, it looks like this, but it's just a green colour because it's unripe. So uh, very, yeah. So I would suggest going to Asian grocers to find it. But as I said, I did see it in Whole Foods when I was in um, America and it was frozen. So you could just buy, buy the frozen um, fresh ripe one. Don't buy the green one because that's not going to taste nice. Um, raw, it just looks. I know, I know cooked barbecue um, jackfruit tastes absolutely delicious, but um, I, I don't think it would be raw. Okay, so we've got our little things. I'm just going to move the camera. We've got our little things like that. So now we're going to add the jackfruit component. So we've got our little bits of jackfruit here. And this is like super sweet. So we just need, you know, put a little bit on each one. We just dress it up. Uh, like this. Uh, there's a question from Dina. Do you yeah. worry about uh, buying all organic where you live? Or is it hard to find organic and how important well, it is to you? It's getting easier um, because they're really paranoid about chemicals and things like that here in Vietnam. Um, they're very health conscious race, the Vietnamese people. Um, so more and more organic shops are opening up. Um, which is awesome. Um, look, I don't always sweat the small things. Jackfruit, I'm going to get organic anyway because it just grows like a weed over here in Vietnam. It's just everywhere on trees and whatever, and they're not spraying their trees, so I will always get organic. Um, I can buy a lot of my lettuces and greens and stuff like that organic because I've got little organic shops now. But, you know, there's certain things... If I'm buying off the street, which is quite often I do, I buy off the little street markets, I don't know. They could tell me anything and, you know, it is what it is. I can't sweat always the big stuff. Ultimately, yeah, I like buying organic. I couldn't afford to eat all, all organic if I was living in America because I, uh, it was quite expensive over there. But, yeah, I just, look, you have to do your best. You have to do your best. And I think... If you soak your fruits and vegetables in a bit of vinegar and water, which is what I do, I, I soak all my um, vegetables and fruit, you know, you can eliminate a lot of different chemicals as well. But, yeah, really good question. Um, so now I'm going to just dress this up a little bit because otherwise it looks ugly. So we're going to make it look pretty. So I add microgreens. These are organic <laughs> microgreens. Um they grow them everywhere here in Vietnam. They're big thin microgreens and you can get them super cheap. And um, I eat a lot of microgreens here for that reason. Not in a position where I need to grow them because they <laughs> make them so cheap here. So I'm just adding in here some little red peppers on top just to make a pretty look. This is just for cosmetic reasons because everything always looks pretty with a bit more color in it. There we go. And some little green onions on top as well. look amazing ts wants to know when you buy the jackfruit do you buy that like whole gigantic one or because like i know here you can buy like like smaller pieces now um uh, no i don't because i'm lucky living in southeast asia <laughs> i can for a dollar a kilo um have it all cut up for me by the little lady who sells it on the street so personally no i don't um jackfruit's very sticky it's um 
got a lot of lanolin on it and it gets really sticky on your hands when you're pulling it apart. So it's not something I really enjoy doing. I had bought whole jackfruits when I first lived in Asia and, you know, wanting to do the whole YouTube thing. Look at me eating a whole jackfruit, you know. But, <laughs> you know, I'm honest. I don't like cutting that up. So it, on the rare event that you should do it, I don't. I, um, if I was in Australia, I guess, I guess I'd have to. If I bought it like that, I'd have to pull it apart. But I probably wouldn't buy it in Australia anyway. I'd, I'd buy it frozen the way I saw it in America because it would be easier. I try to make my lifestyle easy. So here it is. Lift it up. There we go. Ooh, there for the camera. Just like that. We've got the barbecue jackfruit. So it's really easy to make. Um, it's really delicious. Um, you could bring that to a party um, to share with people. You could put it out if you had a barbecue or something like that. Uh, you could eat it all yourself. It's up to you. Um, it's, that's, this here would only be about 400 calories for this whole tray anyway. So it's not high calories. You could have it as a lunchtime thing or something like that. Um, and it's delicious. It's really delicious. It's really tasty. And as I said, don't panic if you don't have a dehydrator. Use your little oven and you can easily make this. And if you don't have jackfruit, you can easily use other fruit. Don't panic and think you can't use what's available. Wow. So I don't, what time is it in Vietnam? Uh, 5.34. I set my alarm for 3.30 <laughs> this morning. Uh, last night before I went to bed, I packed all the food up. I made sure everything was ready because I thought I'm not getting this ready first thing in the morning having a panic. And um, set my alarm for 3.30. I, I really didn't sleep well last night, to be honest with you, because I was in a panic. I'm thinking, oh, what if I sleep past my alarm? I've got oh to get God. up. So you know how you worry. Yeah. And I, I'm good at getting up early, but I did panic. But You know, yeah. if I had known, I could have done this a little later. And now I feel terrible for getting you up. I guess that's gonna, that could even be your breakfast, huh? Yeah, maybe lunch, maybe lunch. It's a bit rich for me first thing in the morning, maybe lunch. But um, no, you don't have to feel dreadful. Um, you go live every day. And like I said to someone, they said, oh, my God, you're getting up so early. I said, it's Chef AJ. If you want oh to go on a channel. But if I had known, we could have done it in five. I am so sorry. I'm not good at, at the time zones. So TS, who's watching live, says, is there a reason Jade prefers raw vegan foods, health benefits, taste? Now, there isn't a reason at all because, as I said, I love potatoes. Um, you know, I, I love other food. I love food, period. Like, I love food. Um, but the reason I love raw vegan food is it's hydrating. Um, I feel really healthy when I'm eating it. Um, I, it's probably for the health benefits. Not to say, look, if you're eating cooked vegetables and things like that, that's super healthy too. Vegetables and um, fruit and whatever, it's the health, they're the healthiest foods on the planet. I guess I just started delving into raw food and got excited by it. Um, it's interesting. I cleared my acne on um, a raw vegan lifestyle. I had really bad cystic acne. Um, it was horrible. And I'd had acne most of my um, life since I was about 13. And, you know, you think after you're not a teenager anymore, it was going to go, but it never went. It, in fact, got worse and worse until it was, like, blistered. And I now don't have an acne problem. And so for me, I guess... I saw firsthand what eating a raw diet does for my lifestyle. Um, but, and I, I believe everyone should um, include raw food in their diet, whether it's having one salad a day, whether it's having, you know, a bowl of fruit, whether you're having a green smoothie or something like that. We should all be trying to eat some live food. I mean, even if you're following like the um, sort of start solution 50-50 style program, you know, um, even if you've got your potatoes and then you're just having the other half salad or something like that, or you want to have, you know, some vegetables, but include some salad and some microgreens as well, because live food's good for your body. So that's why I like having it. I feel alive when I'm eating live food. <laughs> 
Wow. Well, you know, I will say though, it is the prettiest food ever. All the food that people make, the raw food is always the most beautiful. Yeah, of course, because I mean, it's, it's, we're seeing the plants in their true vibrancy and it, it does, it, it, it's really funny when you make, I mean, cooked food, I've seen some beautiful dishes. I mean, we always see beautiful dishes, but it's even with cooked food, most time when we season it, we want to put some microgreens on it or some fresh chili or something like that, just to let it pop. And because raw food is, it's, I mean, it's where the plants are alive. So of course they shine and yeah, they're just wonderful. Wow. So what have, else have you noticed in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle? Because this is uh, your second or third time, I believe, participating in it. Yeah, this is my third time. I've been in all the bundles. I guess I'm now like a raw bundle uh, pioneer, so to speak. Wow, there's so many great things in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. Now, where can I start? Well, yours and Melissa's uh, microbiome book. I think that's fabulous. I'm big on gut health and um, you guys have used a lot of the um, strong gut health um, vegetables to put your salads and your salad dressings together. So that's a wonderful book. Um, Nate, um, he has a course on making microgreens. Now, microgreens have really become a huge thing in the raw vegan movement. We're really pushing them in the raw vegan movement. Um, I've noticed more than ever in the last probably 12 to 18 months, we're really starting to realize the value of microgreens in our diet. And um, they're not that cheap. I noticed when I was in America, and I know they're quite expensive in Australia too. However, you can make your own microgreens and Nate has a full course on actually how to make them and they make them in their office. They've got like a full hydroponic room set up of microgreens. Um, so they've got that set up. That's a great one. There's a book by Raw Food Feast. She has the most amazing food in there. She has raw vegan breads and raw vegan crostinis and um these Asian pancakes, as soon as I get my dehydrator, I'm going to make them. I think that was a really standout one. But, I mean, there's so much in there because there's 35 um, products in there. It's valued at over $2,200. Um, there's just so many good things. There's over 500 recipes. Now, I personally won't make all 500 recipes at Neither will most people and people probably think, oh, but what am I going to do with all these recipes? The thing is, it's so cheap, the ultimate raw vegan bundle. It's $49. And there's so many, uh, so many things in there. You can just choose what you like. Uh, Chef Yin, she has a pie making course. And I have looked into raw vegan um, cake courses and pie making courses before. And they're usually like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. And she has a step by step course on how to make pies and tarts. And her pies and tarts look like they should be on the front cover of Marie Claire. That's probably a real standout. Um, program in there and she actually it's a course so she'll take you through live um, making the different foods which is awesome as well so yeah that one and of course mine I, I have to say I love my book <laughs> so I'll, I'll punch that in too that I really enjoy my book and I have got some really beautiful recipes in there. Obviously, I've got my jackfruit tacos, um, but I've got a lot of other recipes in there. I've got falafel, raw falafels. I've got raw vegan pizza, raw vegan tacos. I've also got um, the crackers, raw vegan crackers, which everybody loves raw vegan crackers, even like non raw vegan so and the thing is you don't have to be a hundred percent raw or even 50 percent raw or even 30 percent raw to enjoy raw vegan food um i can't stress that enough to people people sort of have the mindset oh but i'm not eating raw but it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing just the whole idea why we want to promote um, the a raw vegan lifestyle is not to force anyone to be 100% raw. It's just to encourage people to eat more raw food and enjoy raw food because obviously the more live food you put into your body, the healthier you're going to be. And it's really satiating. Um, 
you know, the thing is sometimes we think we're hungry all the time, but the thing is our body isn't getting the nutrients and the minerals that it needs. And if we're including more raw food in our diet, our bodies are going to get those nutrients and we're not then going to be looking for other food that doesn't really treat our body as well as what fruits and vegetables do. I agree. I agree. And, and, and not everybody, even in the bundle is, I mean, I'm, I'm not raw, you know, and, and so it is about just eating more raw food because I think everybody needs to eat more fruits and vegetables. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look, I don't eat hundred percent raw and quite a few of the people in the bundle don't eat hundred percent raw and that's, that's okay. It's just all about being healthy, healthier. And if you're watching Chef AJ's show, obviously you're interested in health, you're interested in improving your health. So um, a great way to improve your health is definitely getting the ultimate raw vegan bundle. And everything in the bundle is brand new. We all work hard to get this together um to put um new stuff out because we don't want anybody to buy the bundle and say oh i already bought that book and that book no everything is brand new in the bundle so you're not going to double up on anything so that's that's one of the greatest things about it and if you're curious about raw living there's like even a brand new step-by-step -step course on how to be a raw vegan so you can learn from um raw vegan experts so to speak on how to be a raw vegan or how to be a high raw vegan or how to just include some raw vegan food in your lifestyle. Absolutely. Well, thank you for making it so tasty and delicious. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And beautiful. And I, I agree with you. The, the, the pie making book by, by Ross Chef Yin is in, incredible. Oh, um, she's so talented. Um, Diane has Diane has a question and I don't know how to answer because it it's about somebody else's product, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, she says, I purchased the bundle, but it looks like all PDF files. Is that correct? I bought the microgreens course. Would it be a video? So everything is a PDF because even when it's a course, it has to be a PDF because there would be no way to deliver it. So read the PDF and do what it says. Usually it involves clicking a link or registering. That's that's that would be. And then if you have questions beyond that, I think the email is um god well, oh, I don't an ultimate know. raw vegan bundle at gmail.com gmail yeah but you're right it is a, it, it even courses it, everything starts out as a pdf because otherwise it's just too hard to deliver so you just click on the pdf or do whatever it says and that would be the best way yeah and you just simply click on the link and then you're through and then you'll get through to the course so yeah Absolutely. Well, great. Well, thanks so much and get some rest and have a delicious lunch. And <laughs> sorry, we get up so early. Next time I will try to remember what country you're in. I wish I had like a little wall or clock. That well, says, okay. well, the last time I came on here, I was on, I was in Mexico. So I don't expect you to keep up um, exactly where I am in the world. So yeah, I yeah, at where you are at all times. All right. This was a wonderful recipe. And I know that it's not in the show notes yet, but it's three in the morning for her. She says she's got a couple more live. She'll type it up. So just check back you know in a few hours and we'll have it in the show notes for you yeah i certainly we certainly will we'll have the recipe there and um then you can enjoy these beautiful raw vegan tacos yeah and we have actually a special show at 10 o'clock tomorrow with somebody from the bundle named miriam who or mirjam and she's new so i don't know what she's making but it's going to be fabulous and then at 11 o'clock we have our regular show with angelica uh kushi so we have a lot of a lot of raw demos this week so it's going to be great Excellent. Great. Very Take good. care, Jade. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on your show. It's always a pleasure. Bye, everyone.